Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Underrail Expedition. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today. Uh, because we're, we're getting back up to the surface. We have the acorn, and uh, we're definitely not going to die. How do I do that? Main controls. Navigation. Surface. Verifying coordinates. Done. Performing thruster cap capability test. Done. Pinging subnav units, two units respond, obtaining gyro compass information and plotting course. Vessel is ready to surface. So all those scary sounds before. These sounds. They're not bad monsters that want to kill me. They're just a submarine. I really wish you could zoom in. This game has some gorgeous art when you look up close to it. But you can't see it from back here. So it just it does assume a very different style when you play it at 1080p. Which is the only way I can play it, I think. I, I think I, I've looked into having a different resolution and playing this game at higher resolutions, but I couldn't figure it out. Well, I think it dumps. I don't. I'm not sure. I looked into it right at the beginning of the let's play, so it has been 174 episodes. So, well, I guess 73. So it has been a long while. Not really sure what the sonar doing that sound actually means. There should be a beacon here, but everything is dark. There's a lot of dust particles in the water, though. Are you sure it's dust particles in the water? Dust! Not in the air. Dust is in the air. Or surfaces, I suppose. But, sure. I mean, I can live with that. What's the depth gauge right now? 193 meters. We're definitely going up. Well... We're higher than we... Oh, yeah. What happened? We have arrived. I should have saved. I mean, I saved. Oh, I saved, but not here. should be a beacon here. What does that mean? Let's bring the speed up. I can't do anything with this, right? Yeah. So, we're getting out of here. I think we're, we're doing the right thing, by the way. I think we're not... Um we're not missing anything. Uh, so we're going to Professor Oldfield. Let's get out. And we have a lot of junk in our thing. Let me see. Yeah, you don't have anything. But I have a lot of stuff in there that I will need to potentially sell. We'll, we'll worry about it later. That thing carries, carries stuff for days. So I'm not too concerned about it. Also, we're not looting too much stuff, so it's fine. Uh, the only thing that I really have is the... Um, is the um, armor that I was gonna use. Come in, Carrie, come in. Uh, I have a report to make about the Abyssal Station. Tell me, tell me everything. Fade to black. Da -da 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 -da. The, both the professor and the chief listen to your story of descent into the abyssal depths of the Black Sea. Arrival to what is a dilapidated monument to both the Lemurians' ability to adapt and survive, and to their uh, coma instead of dash, and to their ironic, almost paradoxical inability to do just that. In silence, they wait for you to finish. And. I finished. Uh, and then, I say, after I managed to get away from the shallow, shadow Lith's influence, if we want to call it that, I uh, got back to the submarine and uh, successfully surfaced. By the caverns. As amazed as the, uh, the professor is, uh, without... 
as without a doubt he is, you can set, you can see it in his eyes that he is waiting for you to tell him about something. Oh, so this is the option. We can keep it for ourselves, or we can show it to him. You know what? I'm gonna keep it to myself. The acorn was nowhere, nowhere to be found. I think because I think it's gonna be a, an interesting story. The acorn was nowhere to be found. I'm sorry, professor. As if, as if you had punched him in the face. The professor stumbles back and sits on his bed. He removes his glasses. Tears ro rolling down his cheeks. So, this was all for nothing. For nothing. Do not despair. No, that's Chief Briggs. Do not despair, Professor. It is beyond our powers. We have done plenty here. The expedition is a success. But all of the dead sec troopers. This, that, that is our job, Professor. Our duty. Every sec trooper he came here with willing to give his or her life for this expedition. Those who did will be buried with the greatest of honors upon our return. It takes the professor a moment to recover, but then he puts his glasses back on and gets slow, uh, gets up slowly, as if drained of all his life energy. What are your orders, professor? Time for us to leave. What we've managed to collect so far and can be loaded to our ships, we'll bring with us. The rest, it's up to the sea. Richard, it's time to inform your sec troopers the Black Sea Expedition is over. Even though... We haven't seen, found the acorn. I simply can't put my gratitude into words, Carrie. If you ever find yourself in this, Carrie, please stop by the university. You'll always be welcome. Unless you have anything to ask me, you're free to leave. Oh, and don't forget to take the p possessions from your footlocker. Uh, I didn't put any there. Did you leave things for me? Just a couple of questions, Professor. Yes. So do you think Biocorp knew about the Abyssal Station or Shadowlith? What if they feared facing what was down there and retreated because of it? He makes a long, thoughtful pose. To that, I'm afraid I couldn't possibly give you an answer. Well, I guess that's that, really. Um, I don't know where my locker is. Did I have a special room? No, I have a bed over here. Is that it? You have found the acorn, but not a way to open or use it. You can hand it over to someone, or perhaps, well, who can, or perhaps can, or you can keep it for yourself. Hmm. Well, I have an idea. I'm not actually sure how to open it. At all. So we're not doing it like that. We're telling them. As fun of a story as that might have been, I, I, my, my, um... My only thought would be to go over there and mess with that thing over there the opening uh, the opening of the of the box is a huge problem hmm so what are we gonna do instead is we're gonna tell him about the acorn because what I wanted what I was trying to do there was sort of prevent them from ruining the world or something nothing happens for the first few moments after you, after I show him the acorn, he, capital H, acts as if you uh, would you had presented him with the most mundane of things. But then, as his eyes slowly focus on the big white letters from capital A to capital N, he can't but not. That's a double negative. He can but no, that's a wrong negative. He can't but gawk at it in awe. You should. There's no not there. Acorn. Goodness me, this is... This is it. A box? Uh, that's the acorn, Professor. It's, uh, no mobile habitat. 
miniaturization has really done it for mobile habitats. Sure. May I have it, please? Here it is, Professor. He takes it carefully, looking at it from all sides and indeed confirming for the nth time that it's always the nth time. The nth doesn't mean... It's always for the nth time. Because n just means number. It could be the first time. It could be even no time at all. There's a, another word that is often mis... mis there's another word. I don't actually know what the word is. There's a word in English that means, um, like, the th of a lot. Like, a lot to the time. You know what I mean? And it is not nth, because n just really literally means a number. It has a, a, any number. Uh, and it, it is... Actually, you can use it like that, but it, it is to mean that it is more than once. No, it is not even to mean that, it's, it, that it, it, it means that it could be more than once. That's what it means. Anyway, the letters don't read acorn. Do read acorn, yeah. We did it. Oh, goodness me. We did it. It was all worth it. What are, are your orders, Professor? Time for us to leave. What we have managed to collect so far can be loaded to our ships. We'll, we'll bring and can be loaded to our ships. Can will be brought with us. The expedition is over. And I can ask a question. He just says the same thing. And I got experience. But that concludes the quest. Well, I'll get the experience. I don't know who could open it. I don't know what to think about that. Well, it's a secret that I'm just going to have to live with, I suppose. That's just how it goes. Anyway, we're leaving, and we're leaving with our jet ski. And we're going to Core City. Because we have things to explore there, including... Including going to a shop that we haven't visited. A shop that wasn't there in the original game. Because it's a shop for, for these jet skis. So, to Core City. Ah. All of the poo. And look at that. That connects diagonally as well. I do not like that. But we're back. We're back to the, uh... To the core city where I dares where I live. Leave, rather. Uh, because we, we need to we need to be around because... Uh, or we need to leave it over here because this is the fastest way to get back home by spending just a little bit of money. And, uh, we're okay with that. So look at that. Look at all these. We've got a freighter. Gib. Hi, Gib. What's up? It's awfully boring without little men around. Little men being one of the people in the expedition. Barm current a bunch. I don't think they're as good as mine, though. Mine is amazing. There's things in here. Oh, it's a green button and a red button. Right. I don't know if I should have done that. Oh, Ray's in there. Hey, Ray. You have doors. Substantial men. Substantial smile. He greets you as soon as you enter his domain, invite inviting you in with a wave of his hand. Hi there, friend. Come in, come in. We're open. What can I do for you? That should not... Oh. I probably should read this. It's the it's the narrator of the, ex the expedition, so it, it means that there's a bunch of stuff here that doesn't actually matter, but sometimes it does. An oily wrench lays on his desk. Only an old smeared rag separating one from the other. The wrench and the desk. You notice it. He notices it. An instant later, it disappears into one of his deep pockets wrapped in the rag. His smile was never gone. That should not be there. We... Gib and I were fixing one of the 208s for a client of ours. Field repairs. Just got back to the shop. Sorry about my appearance. So you're here for a jet parts repairs? Um. Uh, I, I have a jet ski. I could sell the jet skis. 
You open your mouth, but the voice that he's heard is not yours. What the freaking hell does that mean? Does it mean that he talks instead of me? I think it means that he I, he doesn't get, give me a chance to talk. I'm sorry. Name's Raymond Sir, the owner. And you were saying? Uh... I just came in to see what this place is about. Hardcore. Well, now, um, friend. By the way, what do I call you? What's your name? Bob. But Bob is a male name. Uh... N not where I'm from. Bob it is then. Now, Bob, I'm tr not buying junk jets, so you know. Only quality jets. If you got a nice ride, just bring your jet inside and we'll take a look at it. There's buttons by the jet lift you can use to raise the low and lower the gate. Uh... Well, I suppose I have nothing at the moment. Um... That's interesting. You can make really I I had heard that you can make ridiculous amounts of money by selling junk uh, by selling jets. Uh, so that's nice. I would like to take a look at the jet skis you have available. We got lots of different jets, Bob. The only question is what you need and how much coin you got. If you're looking for something cheap or something to f to get you from A and and to from point. From point A and point B, we offer a variety of junk jets at your disposal. If you, however, want to get from point A to point B mighty fast, maybe dominate some asshats along the way, or return the hauling lots, return to hauling lots of loot, or just cruise around with style, then maybe uh, you oughta take a look at something a bit better. Yeah, I was thinking of something, the good stuff. I'm a zoner. Ha! Ah, that's what I like to hear. Let's see. Oh my god. That one has flames in it. Here they are, Bob. I keep these inside because I don't want to risk some assless son of a rat nabbing them. As you can see, these are mean machines. We got speeders, freighters, freighters. Take your pick, but do not. Uh, but do know that some of these can set you back tens of thousands of charons. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, tell me about the torpedo. Speed, that's all there is to the torpedo. It's one of the finest examples of hexagon engineering. It's twice as fast as a normal jet, twice as light. Some it comes equipped with S, uh, XG Turbo 999 electric turbocharger, turbo power turbochargers, which brings you from not to a hardcore in time, it t in the time it takes you to press that sweet turbo button. It, it got two engines, baby, and almost no weight. This jet, this very jet, is the fastest jet, the fastest jet in South Under Rail. Let me repeat that, the fastest jet. I can't deny that. Speed, it comes at a price though, and not just how much coin it's worth, but the fact that the frame offers little protection and durability, and that it handles best when you're going in a straight line. Uh, there's a lot of them, then. What can you tell me about the junk jets? The junk jets, as normal folks in pros alike tend to call them, are basically makeshift jets made from whatever's been lying around. They can come in many different shapes and sizes, but they are generally four frames with, uh, which are used as bases for further modification. 20, 30 years ago, before the dissol dissolution of Biocorp, there had been a large demand for jets, apparently. Since then, a lot of those have been abandoned, damaged, or disassembled. So folks have been taking what they could find and started modifying them. The basic junk jet, the one that comes to everyone's mind when you say jet, is a small standing jet. It's got okay speed, low durability, and a simple trunk, but it gets the job done. Scrapjet is a more modern term for a larger standing jet, but it got a bit more scrap on it. It's slightly heavier, but it offers more protection and durability. There, then there's the skimmer, which is the smallest or the smaller kind of si sitting jets, and the scooter, the larger one. Sitting jets are in general more durable, but are slower. What really makes the junk jets are their components. They might not be able to compete with a brand name or higher quality custom built jets. But you can tweak them and tune them and got something really good for little coin. Um, what are some important things I need to know when choosing a jet ski? Well, it depends on what you want from a jet, but basically you can break it down into four parts. You gotta consider the frame, it's the most important part, the engine, the battery, and the suspension. That's a bunch of stuff you can get for your jet access, access, accessories and whatnot. 
but these four are the pipes and barrels. Uh, got it. Oh, tell me about the suspension, because that word is weird. The suspension is what keeps your jet stable and easier to control. Technically, you can do without it, but let's face it, life's a lot better if you got it. Whatever it is, is what, what, water is an uneven surface. Even when there aren't any waves, you're still riding on something that's providing a lot of resistance. Suspension helps you improve your ride quality, keep your aim steadier, and make your landing much better when you're bouncing over them waves at 100 kilometers an hour. The most important thing is to make sure the size of the suspension is right for the jet. Everything else is just a matter of how much coin you want to exchange for stability. Okay. Can I take a closer look at the jet skis? Sure, sure. Inspect any jet you like. And feel free to take a look at what's under the hood, eh? If you got questions, just ask. Actually, I do want to take a look under the hood, because look at these things. I probably can't sit on them, but we have the Devastator. This Devastator. Well, actually, you know what? We're going to load the autosave, because we can look at our jet from there. And we're going to... I'm going to note down all my stats. Oh, sorry. I bumped the microphone there, because I'm reaching for my... For my pen. So we got uh, durability, 400. That's a pretty important aspect. We got energy. That's also pretty important. Of a hundred, uh, 1100. That's pretty good. Uh, then base speed 22, 2020 MPH. Let's just go with MPH. It's not MPH, but whatever. Uh, speed modifier. Those are temporary. And then we have stability for 74, 55. Whatever those mean. And then the rest of it doesn't quite matter. Oh, the weight is pretty important. Uh, that's 511. It's pretty good. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Okay. Consumption. Oh, yeah. So, 260 consumption. So, I will remember these points so we can compare to these things. Because I'm sure... I'm sure that... I mean, I suppose there is something better here. But maybe there isn't anything better. Maybe we already have the best thing. Like, for example, durability here. Ours is 400. This is 550. That's not too much. Our energy is lower. Um, oh, but he doesn't have energy is lower because, ooh. This, ours is 750, I believe, but, yeah, with the uh, 350 on the other one. I oh, oh, that's two batteries of maximum size. Wait. Oh, this is a lot better. It's got ma uh, space two for engine. Oh, that's space three for suspension. This thing is enormous. What's the speed, though? Base speed is the same. Speed modifier is different, though. So ours is 100%. This is 65. So that's where, where it comes in, I suppose. Yeah, it's a lot slower. I suppose with the engine, it's it's a little bit different. Some interesting batteries over here. 70, durability. Let's go. Oh, that's not... That's not the torpedo. What's the torpedo? That's that one right there. Yeah, it's basically a frame. 200 speed. That is a lot, actually. What is that engine? Consumption ratio of 120. What's the consumption? 120. It's not even... It doesn't even use that much power. It's just a single engine, though. I probably should, shouldn't do that. Don't worry. <laughs> That's why we save. Also, that thing sees us. So, we looked at you already. Oh, those are... No, that's this is the plasma levitator or leviator. Oh, I don't actually know what leviator means. We have missiles. Rocket meant to be fired from the shark jet ski. He said something about um accessories, and I was like, I didn't see any of those. But I think that's just what that is. Missiles. I wonder if I can buy some accessories. This blazer over here is pretty fast. I'm sure some of this stuff is better. I'm very satisfied with mine. I don't need extra speed. So, Ray. What can I do for you, Bob? I'd like to take a look at some of the... No. Um, I need some spare parts. You're in the right place, Bob, because we got a hardcore assortment of engines, battery suspensions, from cheap to coin, melting, we got it all. Of course, we also stock cells for powering your jets, ammo, and all the, uh... Yeah, enough of my uh, yapping. Let me show what you got. 
Uh, it's good. Uh, so I can sell you batteries. How many batteries do you want? All the batteries? He doesn't like all the batteries. How many batteries do you need? You need two, two batteries. Sure, I'll sell you two batteries. Two batteries right there. Sort. And, uh, well, a medium well-made engine. I don't like well-made. I need supreme, sublime. Uh, let's auto-sort that. We also have the rockets. So I don't even know where this would fit in my current vehicle. They're really expensive, these parts. How many coins do I have? Oh, I don't have that many. I only have 20,000. Yeah. Probably would not be able to... to make a whole lot of money. I can definitely scavenge a lot of the, the parts and just bring them here if I want to. Which, again, I just... I don't need to. I don't need it. I don't need the money. Because we're a spellcaster. So we're good with that. Good. We are, however, not good with the time because we're out of it. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Underrail Expedition. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.